Mention the name Miss Daisy to fans of good Southern cooking and well, you'll conjure up thoughts of tea rooms, recipe books, and just all around great Southern dishes. Daisy King has been part of the area food scene for more than four decades and she's still going strong, still creating dishes in demand at a new location called Miss Daisy's Kitchen. My passion's food. I wake up thinking about it. I go to bed thinking about it. I have, as a lot of other people do, a plethora of cookbooks that I still like to hold in my hand and read. And it just makes me happy. During the past four decades, Daisy King has made a lot of people happy with food. As a restaurateur, author of 14 cookbooks, and popular celebrity chef. Small wonder she's been called Tennessee's first lady of Southern cooking. Daisy grew up on a family farm in Buford, Georgia, where she learned how to cook from her grandmother. Many years later, after graduating from Belmont College, she was teaching, catering, and raising a family in Nashville. But soon the lure of her first restaurant adventure came along, thanks to Calvin and Marilyn Leahy, who opened a place called Carter's Court in Franklin. He said, well, why do you think you'll be successful? And I said, it's easy, the formula. I love food and I love people. And I like to pair the two together. And I like to have a party. So the first Miss Daisy's Tea Room was born. And it was a hit. But Calvin, the businessman, quickly noticed how many customers eagerly asked for recipes. I said, Daisy, y'all need to get a cookbook out. I wanted to do like a 1,000. We settled on 500. And we sold out of that yellow cookbook before Christmas. We have sold over one million copies of that little yellow cookbook. Other restaurant adventures would follow. Most were winners, but a few, well. I say it's kind of like a, a, a football game. I had 17 uh, years and had 15 great years, and I fumbled too. But that's all right. You know, you learn from your mistakes. In the 1980s, food companies often hired Miss Daisy to travel the country on media tours, which would lead to her latest endeavor. I would go into these delis, and they were wonderful. Now, we're talking in the 80s, and I would ha they would have prepared foods. My wheels started turning, and I thought, I somehow need to get Miss Daisy's chicken divan and chicken pot pie and, and lasagnas. I need to get them on the shelves in a grocery store. So in the early 90s, she opened a store within a store called Miss Daisy's Kitchen, first in Nashville, now here at Grassland Foodland in Franklin. You know, people say, how could you go from a beautiful restaurant to working in a grocery store? And I'm like, it's just been blissful because I can help people. You know, if someone has a dietary need, I can say, we're going to aisle three and I'm going to help you by low sodium, whatever or if you are a diabetic, okay, we're not gonna do chocolate, we're gonna use cocoa. Now people can stop and buy her trademark recipe dishes for feasting at home. Dishes like her famous chicken pot pies that seem to disappear as fast as she and her staff can make them. I don't use frozen chicken. We, uh, we got a lot of chicken breast in every week and we poach our chicken and then we mix it with the sauces and, and the vegetables and put it in a pie shell and we put the puff pastry on it. If you look at Southern food, it's comforting. It just makes you feel good to look at it. And when you see a big pot pie as a family, you can feed six people. The children will like it and the adults will like it. One food many adults don't like is kale. Sure, it's healthy, but it's bitter and has this rough texture. Well, leave it to Miss Daisy to create a kale salad recipe even naysayers would savor. I will look at a recipe and then I decide what I like about it and I actually saw a hit and miss version of this in a recipe book and I'm like well I want to add this and I want to add that and I added the orange juice from the golden raisins because when it said citrus I wanted my juices. So you can you can read that and say mm, right. now, good but I can make it better. Well I don't always say I'll make it better but I'll make it according to how I like it and how I think the guests would like it. Okay, now, come over with me over here and let's see if... That was about ready. If we have succeeded in this, uh, let's get a spoon and I'm going to give you a little taste and 
uh, then I'll let, I'll let you decide. Now you're gonna have green all over your teeth, but that's all right because it, it's worth it. And then here's, here is the fork. And there's our, and this is enough, Joe, enough kale salad to probably serve 15 or 20 people. That's what a pound will make. You like that? I like it. It's del and it's so healthy for you, it's so good. Well, come back to Miss Daisy's Kitchen anytime and we'll cook again and we'll cook something else you like. Okay, do you have any floss? Oh, I do. <laughs> if Southern Cooking had an ambassador, it would likely be this lady. She's delighted dignitaries from around the world with it. She's enlightened countless fans of good food with it. One could sum up Miss Daisy King's ongoing food for thought this way. I used to say when, when Wayne worked in politics, politics can have enemies, but food doesn't. So I've really never discussed with my guests that would come into my businesses anything political because food loves everyone and everyone loves food.